Everyone wants Japan to do well at the World Cup. They have some of the most creative fans uh, in tournaments. Go see some highlights of South Africa 2010. They, a lot of them come up with very interesting costumes, to say the least. Everyone wants Japan to do well, except, well, maybe Colombia, Poland, and Senegal, their Group H opponents. But the Samurai Blue head into Russia 2018, yet again with lowered expectations on the back of a sort of a milk toast, lukewarm 2018 friendly season where they had to come from behind in stoppage time against the likes of Mali. They registered a 2 0 loss against Ghana. They lost against the Ukraine. They lost in the final match day to Saudi Arabia, albeit they were already qualified by then. Japan has really been struggling, and from conversations that I've had with people, particularly on the J-League uh, subreddit, uh, even though the J-League has been developing in the last 20 years that it's been around, similar, similarly to the USA's MLS, Japan hasn't really been cultivating any standout uh, individual Japanese talent, with very few exceptions. You have Kaisuke Honda, Shinji Okazaki, yeah, a couple of other Japanese stars that are in the Bundesliga that I know my Bayern team comes up against regularly. Um, and in, in addition to that, Japan have just struggled to become somewhat of a mainstay force in contemporary World Cup history. Now, credit to them, they've gotten to every World Cup since 1998, which was their first World Cup, and this will be their sixth. And coincidentally, Japan, they tend to, every other World Cup, advance, not advance, advance, not advance. But they tend to do so coming off the back of a lot of turmoil uh, inside the JFA, which is the Japanese Football Association. There's always drama going on in Japanese football, whether it's over the status of the J-League uh, in relative comparison to other Asian leagues um, in the Confederation or managerial issues, as was the case when uh, Takeshi Okada took them to South Africa 2010. And even now more so, we talk about managerial woes, Vahid Halil Hodzic, the manager who took Japan, excuse me, who took Algeria to the round of 16 in the 2014 World Cup, he, he was unceremoniously sacked last month, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos. Uh, so there's a whole dispute now where he's suing the JFA for libel and uh, for, you know, being dumped out in such a, uh, according to him, a, an unfair fashion. They brought in a, a local domestic insider of the JFA named Akira Nishino. He has barely two months to prepare this team for the World Cup. That's not good. But on the same token, Japan's previous manager, it is said, lost the confidence of the dressing room. And when you lose the, the inspiration from your players, you kind of have to go. No matter what stage in the World Cup preparation process you are in. If you lose the confidence of your players, you need to go. That's one of the very few exceptions. I actually do believe in this case with the late appointment of Anishino, this will actually be to Japan's benefit because they got rid of the negativity surrounding uh, Vahid Halilhodzic's tenure as manager. So some key players for Japan include Captain Makoto Hasebe. Uh, he plays for Eintracht Frankfurt. Uh, another few key players will be, ho ho um, uh, can't pronounce the names, Hotaru Yamaguchi, uh, Shinji Kagawa, of course, Bo Russian Dortmund, <laughs> have to deal with him a lot when he comes up against Bayern, uh, Kaisuke Honda, who is older now, he's 31, uh, let's see, who else, their veteran goalkeeper, who I remember, his last name is Kawaguchi, no, Kawashima, yeah, yeah, Eiji, Eiji Kawashima, uh, I'm not reading these names off a list. I, I go out based on my own footballing knowledge, what I can remember. If I can't remember anything, I will I will write it on paper because why not? I'm trying to remember some of the, their younger forwards that Japan has. Uh, Shinji Okazaki, there we go. But he's kind of getting older now, too. He's what, like 34? 
and he, he plays for Leicester. Uh, so they have a little bit of a, a blend of veteran and youth um, and youth as well. But the problem with Japan, I think, is generally speaking, they. I'll just be blunt without being offensive. They're they're not good enough, um, and I think especially with as is the case with Asian teams entering 2018. It could be a repeat of 2014 where, where absolutely no Asian teams got through the first round. Um, they're just sort of behind the rest of the world in quality. Uh, that's not to say that, you know, Oceania or CONCACAF are, are, are way ahead. I mean, certainly not Oceania. And I would say CONCACAF is just about, you know, but... Asian national teams, they generally don't do well in major tournaments with very rare exceptions. Hint, hint, South Korea 2002. Uh, but even that was, you know, accused of being through nefarious, shady means. Uh, Aust- Japan, they've had success only when they hosted it on home soil in 2002. I do remember they got to the round of 16. They got to the round of 16 in 2010, but that was an exceptionally good Japanese side. They they had the likes of a younger Honda and also Endo as well. Um, 2014 was a bitter disappointment for them. They crashed out with a 4-1 loss to Colombia, who they coincidentally, they have to play again. They open up against Colombia. They open up against the country who, el- who eliminated them and was their last opponent in their very last World Cup game four years ago. So that's a little bit, you know, that's interesting. Gives Japan an opportunity for revenge, at least. Um, a positive thing I'll say about Japanese players is that now more than ever, they are getting exposure at the international club scene. I mean, the 1998 and 2002 national uh, Japanese team, they were players that were mostly consigned to the local J-League, but now, like I said, a lot of them play in the Bundesliga. Some of them are playing in the lower divisions of the... Uh, of English football. A lot of them are in, uh, I think a couple are in France. I know that Honda is actually in Pachuca, which is in Mexico of all places. Um, but the rest consist of local domestic sides like, um, uh, Yokohama, Kawashima Antlers, uh, Nagoya Grampus, Gamba Osaka. Well, that's more J league teams that I thought that I knew. Uh, so Japan, you know, they're always a fascinating side to watch in World Cups. They add that diversity to the World Cup to make the World Cup really the World Cup. Are they among the 32 best national teams in the world? Most likely not. But Japan, you can't help but root for them because they, because they're Japan. You know, Japan's just a cool place. Like I said, they're also developing in world football as well so they have that you know they have that in common with the mls at least um they are regularly among the best teams in asia they have won three of the last four asian cups so they are the cream of the crop on the asian continent it's just can they prove their medals worth uh in a world cup they have and they have not and 2018 doesn't seem like it's going to be a great year for them. 